Good evening, guys. Welcome back. And happy Thursday. Tomorrow, it's finally inching towards the end of the week. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Hope uh, everyone has a good Chinese New Year. Tomorrow is unofficially the last day uh, because technically Chinese New Year ends the moment we start going to going back to office and work. So yeah, uh, but if you were to follow the uh, actual uh, calendar or, or the actual celebration, uh, tomorrow is the 15th uh, day of uh, of the lunar year. So we call it Yuan Xiao Jie. So that would be officially the last day of Chinese year. And after that, uh, it's back to serious stuff. But uh, let's not talk about what will end, but what would we be uh, talking about tonight? Uh, this company, I would say quite a decent company. If you are someone who uh, invest, look for good companies to invest, you might have and you would have come across uh, this company. Uh, this company, I wouldn't say it's volatile. I wouldn't say that uh, people will talk about it uh, during normal circumstances because um, the way the company is being run, it's just decent, right? very, very decent. And uh, you don't see huge uh, volatility for, for, for this company. And um, for those who are not aware of what this company is, uh, yeah, good that we are choosing it uh, for today's Not So Late Night Show. Uh, but maybe I'll get Chun Bing's uh, opinion first uh, before we venture into today's uh, company of, of, the, of, the, of the night. But uh, Chun Bing, what do you uh, actually feel about uh, Uchi Tech? I mean, uh, it's quite interesting that when you look into their business, uh, there are a lot of uh, good finding, uh, like most of a lot of technology stock, you'll find them, I mean, th those good ones, usually they don't have any debt. But for Uji Tech, uh, this company alone, they got quite a few good factors that you should really put this company at least in the watch list. So later we will walk you through on what is the interesting point that, that we can point out from, from this company. And then uh, if you guys are the one that looking for a very stable company, they give you a lot of dividend returns, then maybe this is a good company to at least put inside your watch list. Definitely, definitely. So I think it all ties back to what the company's business is, right? So if the company's business uh, makes sense for it to continue earn uh, good investment returns or good business, then uh, yeah, then it, it does give them a sense of uh, so-called logic to actually um, pay out good dividends when, when business is well. So that is a straight, very straightforward kind of um, uh, correlation that you can find if you come across such a company. So will Uchi Tech um, be this kind of company that um, uh, you would want to actually consider? So shall we start, Jumei? Yep. All right. So uh, of course, if you are new to um, not so late night show. Uh, it is being run by uh, Kaya Plus. So uh, we are uh, financing, I was, oh, I'm saying financing, it's an investing centric uh, website. If you uh, find it hard to study or learn about investing, yeah, you can follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. Uh, we do uh, share stuff uh, on investing companies related. And um, if you are someone who's looking to, you know, uh, master a foolproof method to find dividend companies then uh, yeah this is something you might, you might want to con consider uh, we will be launching dividend gems i think yeah next week so next week will be uh, the first batch of uh, dividend gems and if you uh, join us uh, as a first batch um, this the price is uh, 388 per pack uh, subsequent uh, batches will be priced at 488. So if dividend investing, proper dividend investing, foolproof method is something that you want, yeah, definitely do consider checking dividend gems out, right? So what is dividend gems? So it 
will be providing you guys a complete steps and the criteria to screen out good dividend companies. And these three sets of uh, different criteria to gauge and analyze uh, normal companies, banks and insurance companies or financial companies, and also REITs. So why is separated to three? Because they are special metrics and KPIs for certain industries and companies. And if you do enroll in Dividend Gems, you will be enjoying a free for life cost material related updates. Say for example, six months down the road or one year down the road, we find that there are some information you want you wanted to touch up uh, Dividend Gems. Uh, you will be enjoying all of these uh, upgrades or updates free for life. We will not be asking you for an additional fee. And for the materials that we are producing for Dividend Gems, the uh, presentation slides, the uh, write-ups, uh, and also uh, we will be doing it uh, via video uh, presentation. So all of this, the video replays, et cetera, yeah, you will be enjoying uh, having access to it and you can do unlimited playbacks and revision. So that's about it. Uh, of course, as always, the disclaimer, uh, whatever we are going to share with you today, uh, it's a real company. But please, please, please uh, do not take it as a buy, sell, or hold uh, call decision. Uh, please do further uh, due diligence and study. And if it's the right company uh, for your risk profile, by all means, we wish you all the very best. So I'll hand it back to Chunbing. What is Uchi Tech or Uchi Technologies Baha? Yep. So you might be wondering why we are showing all these coffee-related kind of images. And at the end, the company itself uh, actually named after Uji Technologies, Berhad. Uh, are they a technology company? Are they a, a manufacturing company and so on? Uh, I think we will try to share with you what they actually does, what is their customer and so on. So basically, uh, this company was incorporated uh, quite long ago, back in 1998. And then uh, subsequently, they got listed in second board and then moved to main board uh, in 2002. And then uh, what they are actually doing is they are an ODM providers. Uh, basically, they own the design and they manufacture the coffee machine and then uh, let someone else to sell it out. As in, they don't own the brand. They just build the thing for the other people to, to sell it. Uh, and then they actually build, an, as in, they own the end-to-end -end -end kind of uh, manufacturing process for you, for the client to be able to own the end products and then sell it under their brand. So this is what they did uh, in summary. If you go to the next uh, slide. So basically this is one of the machine uh, or one of the thing that you can link back on what is the thing that uh, they are producing. So Jura.com, I mean, if you wanted to check out uh, who are them. So basically Jura is, one of the uh one of their client that actually uh use their machine sell it uh to not to malaysian uh but then to uh customer around the world so uh, you might be wondering actually what is this about so basically this is an automated uh, coffee machine that you just need to put in all the necessary uh materials and then it click a uh, single buttons and then after uh, one minute, two minutes, you will get a very, uh, as in the coffee will be made, ready made for you. So it's quite convenient for people inside your house. And then uh, you don't want to actually go for slightly uh, lower quality kind of coffee. For example, those three in one uh, instant uh, coffee, you, you might opt for this. So this is one of the example of what they actually did in end product kind, kind of view. So if you go to the next one, Yep. So this machine alone uh, can do quite a bit of stuff. Lah. So uh, if we take Jura product uh, as an example, so they even allow you to control uh, the making of the coffee using your phone, uh, choosing the recipe and, and so on. And then with one click, uh, everything will get ready for you. A uh, hot coffee that is uh, with aroma will get ready for you in minutes. So this is some of the thing that uh, actually uh, done by this company and then we sell under Jura brand, one of, one of their clients. If you can go to the next one. So behind the scene to enable uh, this coffee machine uh, uh, to be done, uh, it involves quite a lot of, uh, maybe in the layman term, it's quite a lot of automation or a lot of automated process that make this entire thing happen. 
because you got the coffee beans and then you need to have some sort of grinding, uh, put in milk. All these things is actually controlled by a, a series of uh, controller. Uh, based on what recipe uh, you should put in, how many milks, how many seconds, all those things. Uh, this is actually controlled by, by the board itself. You see on the left hand side. And then they are the one actually manufacturing it. And so they own the entire design. Uh, they didn't get some design from someone else and then man, uh, manufacture it. But they actually uh, do the entire things. Ultimately, they will actually uh, put in someone else's brand. And then those guys will own the brand and sell it out. So they are not at the very uh, low uh because people will say upstream or, or downstream, they, they are relatively uh, on the top uh, because they own the materials and then they own the design. Uh, the only thing is they don't own the brand. If you can go to the next one, it will be uh, a very uh, simple structure that, that this company has. So basically, uh, this UG Technology Berhad is the investment holding uh, company that own these three uh, wholly own, 100% uh, own kind of uh, sub, uh, subsidiaries that do different things uh, with a different focus. So from the, from the name itself, uh, you'll be able to uh, guess what they did. Lah. And then of course, well, one of it uh, is actually in China. And then every uh, company under them uh, have a very specialized task lah, to, to make the entire things work. Can okay, we can go to the next, next one. Okay, so uh, if you guys follow us, then you might see this uh, slide already. So again, uh, we are trying to bring this out uh, to tell you uh, what's different between OPM, OTM, and OEM. Uh, the whole thing actually will impact uh, the number of profit margin they are able to retain. Of course, the higher, uh, the, higher the level you go, uh, you will be able to retain more margins, but uh, for UG Tech alone, uh, they are the one that actually in the middle layer, they own the design, do the manufacturing, and then let other people do the sales. So, of course, they might not grab 100% of the profit margin, but then they can tap on all uh, specialized people in selling coffee machine for them. So, imagine you have this one single product, but then you let uh, 20 or even 100 uh, companies sell on behalf of you using their own brand without the span of marketing and so on. So this is some of the advantage that uh, that this company can 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 get. Uh, they just need to focus on the machine and then uh, focus on the cost efficiency behind it and then let the pro, let the people own the brand, uh, spend the marketing budget, sell the thing for them. So this is one of the advantage. So they are not at the very downside, but uh, it's relatively good position. I think this one we pass to Japan to share some of their performance uh, and some okay. of the division uh, policy and so on. Cool, cool. So if you guys look at um, how Uchi Tech's income statement actually look like uh, for the past 10 years, uh, you see that in uh, 2011, they started off uh, with a revenue of around 100 million. Of course, uh, subsequently it came down, 22 million, 94 million, 95. But after that, it actually cooled back up. So after that, it grew 11 and 12 million and all the way up uh, ever since 2016. Every year uh, was a good year, was a growth year. And as of the latest uh, fiscal 2020, they just released their latest quarter. Uh, you can see that um, uh, I would say that they actually hit, uh, it's actually a good result compared to 2019, even though it's slightly down. But do remember uh, 2020 was a year where a lot of companies got really impacted uh, by COVID-19, by the pandemic, right? So you have um, shutdowns uh, all around the world. And uh, I believe Uchi Tech was also one of the companies uh, impacted quite hardly. But nevertheless, they still managed to at least uh, match 2019's performances. But one thing that you should actually be uh, very uh, impressed by them is that the profit margin actually went up. So in terms of uh, profit, the company actually grew. Uh, versus 2019, it was at uh, 75.9 million and it went up to uh, 83.8 million, right? But uh, one thing that actually caught my mind when I actually saw their 10 year history uh, is that um, you can see that the profit margin has been yo yo uh, 
uh, back in 2011, 2012, it was around 40 plus percent, right? Uh, higher, higher end of the 40 plus percent, 47, 48. And uh, 20, 2013, 2014, it came down to 41.6, 42. Then only it went back up again, up to 50 plus percent. And as of the latest fiscal uh, year 2020, it uh, actually hit around 54%. So, of course, you have to really find out what is actually causing the yo-yo because uh, we don't want any, uh, any, any of the underperforming uh, profit margin uh, just, just because the company is not unable to co control them. So, of course, uh, if you look at just the past recent years, uh, why in 2017 profit margin came down, uh, you will see that uh, they quoted uh, the USD depreciation, you know, even though that um, revenue went up, uh, profit margin came out slightly, but uh, it was due to uh, the USD depreciation. So this company is selling to clients outside of Malaysia, uh, very normal uh, circumstances, the uh, currency uh, would be in USD or in other uh, currencies apart from the Malaysian ringgit. So uh, Forex will actually impact the company's profit margin from here we know. And the second one, you can see that um, just 2019, even though um, it held it, the, the, the profit margin came down to 49%, but it went back up to 54%. So what caused the spike in profit margin uh, was actually uh, an increase in demand for the group's products and services. And also, uh, they also quoted that um, in terms of the operating expenses and also the Forex, uh, it was actually uh, a good uh, kind of uh, adjustment for them uh, for, the, for, for fiscal year 2020. And then if I were to zoom back to 2013, why it suddenly came down to their historical 10-year low, uh, it was because due to uh, flattish sales and also higher operating expenses and forex exchange contract losses. So straight away, uh, within just a uh, 10 years history, uh, I would know that uh, USD, uh, MYR fluctuations will impact the profit margin. Uh, sales is actually cyclical. So there are periods during this 10-year history that um, sales was not so good and that is why the revenue actually shrunk. And also, uh, if they cannot control their operating expenses, uh, you will also see some impact in their operating margins as well. So this is basically a 10-year kind of summary I can see. And I already, from here, I know some of the risks that the company might face. So moving on to who are their customers? Right, if you look at the latest uh, 2019 uh, annual report, uh, where they specifically uh, spell out who are their major customers, you can see that uh, out of their uh, total revenue, uh, around 81% is coming from two customers. So 81% of their total revenue made up from customer A, customer B. And customer A actually made up 73% uh, of it. Customer B made up 7.5% of it. So you can see that straight away, customer A is the biggest uh, client for uh, Uji technology. So of course, the uh, key assumption is that uh, customer A is pointing to Jura, which is the uh, companies uh, that we showed you just now early in the slides. And if you also were to look at the uh, revenue breakdown by the countries, you will see that uh, a lot of it actually majorly is coming from Switzerland and Surprise, surprise, Jura is actually a company that is headquartered in Switzerland. So uh, all of this ties back and actually points that uh, com customer A is highly likely uh, to be Jura. And uh, of course, if you look at the other breakdowns as well, you see Portugal, Germany uh, uh, as the other key countries. And all of these are the so-called European countries that uh, Jura is actually having a strong customer base. So how do we know that? Straight away, you go to Jura's website and you can see that uh, almost 80.5% uh, of their revenue is coming or contributed by uh, countries in the European re uh, region. Only around 20% is coming from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, one good thing that you can actually see that uh, the number of uh, sales in terms of the automatic coffee machines has been rising. And that means Jura growth, uh, OG Tech would probably uh, be tapping on top of the Jura's growth as well. So uh, after going through uh, the uh, meteoric and very satisfying growth story, uh, next, let's find out how the company is being run, right? So you can see that surprisingly for a company that is growing, right, uh, usually if you follow uh, Kaya Plus, 
uh, and you've gone through all the past companies' balance sheet of all the companies that are growing, right? You will notice that the assets usually tag along or grow with the company's performances. But this one was the first. Uh, it also surprised me when I actually found how it out. So the company's asset actually dropped. Uh, from 2017, it dropped down significantly uh, to 2018, and only then it climbed slowly, kind of like up. So what actually causes the drop? Uh, so we'll show you later. Actually, it's due to the uh, reduced in short-term deposits. And second point, I have noticed that this company has no debt. So this company totally does not rely on borrowings and loans to run its business. And thirdly, uh, remember we said that the assets of the company drop. So cash and the cash equivalents of the company also tag along the drop. So something must be uh, going on with the cash and cash equivalents that, that causes the assets to drop and also the cash and cash equivalents to drop also. So uh, it all links back when you look at the uh, fiscal year 2018-2017 balance sheet. Uh, basically, you can see the big difference. Uh, back then, they have around 20, 222 million of uh, short-term deposits. It dropped down to 97 million. So around half of it is gone. And it also ties back to the drop in total assets here as well. So question that we need to know that where have the cash gone, right? Why suddenly 100 million plus of the cash uh, has disappeared and caused the total assets to be uh, reduced? So if you look at the cash flow statements, you can also detect that actually uh, a huge chunk of it actually went out as uh, cash under uh, cash flow under financing activities. Uh, there you can see here the negative 198 million actually is captured here. And what actually is the main reason? So if you go back to the cash flow statement, fiscal year 2018, you can see that a company paid out a special dividend of 100 plus million uh, ringgit. So uh, from here, it all ties back, uh, reduced in assets and reduced in cash and cash equivalents because the company decided to pay out a special dividend in the year 2018 uh, of around 111 million. And that is also where you can see that uh, this historical dividend chart, uh, it all started flatly, but in the year fiscal year, uh, 2018, you will see that the special dividend actually pushes up uh, and make the total dividend paid out by the company uh, for that particular year uh, at a high of 34 cents per share. Right? And uh, if you follow the latest announcement by the company, uh, the latest dividend per share is around 9.5 cents. So add that up with the previous dividends paid out. So in the fiscal year of 2020, the company actually paid out 17 cents. So actually one cent more than the fiscal year 19. So it was a tough year for a lot of companies, but surprisingly, uh, Uchi Technologies did pretty well uh, for, for fiscal year 2020 amidst the pandemic. So after going through, uh, surprisingly, a good well-run company uh, supplying uh, a well-known coffee machine brand in the Europe and also um, seemingly continuously uh, to have growth prospect as well. So what are the prospects that um, Uchi Tech uh, potential investors should take note of? You are on mute. You need to unmute. <laughs> so I think... Uh... To keep it short, lah. So when we talk about when we first when I first look into this company, uh, the whole thing that I have in mind is all about this work from home culture that caused by the pandemic definitely drive the demand of coffee machine inside, uh, your I mean inside a, a house that owned by you or, or me. So, uh, coffee has increasingly become one of the top drinks that that consumed by 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 peoples. Uh, on top of teas, uh, of course, this is the two main one that consumed by people. Um, and then thanks to pandemic, actually become a catalyst for a uh, company like Jura. Uh, they managed to catch on it and then grow their, their business. Um, even though we put in high margin as one of the prospect, uh, but if you take a step back, uh, you will think this make quite, I mean, make a lot of sense because you need to make this kind of margin uh, because for you to buy a coffee machine maybe once in a, in a lifetime uh, and then maybe after 10 years, 20 years, you need to change it, for example, uh, because this thing can last long and then not, not like you need to upgrade it like, like your phone 
every three years, then your phone has a more uh, 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 better quality of camera and, and, and so on. But then for this uh, coffee machine, it might not be. So I'm glad that they are actually in ODM uh, uh, line, managed to secure most of their, their margin. And then for them to hovering between 40 to 50, it's quite healthy. Or else they make uh, a lot of money uh, during the first five to 10 years. Then after that, it's gone. I, I always share this story that, that I know of, uh, I mean, to my friend, uh, in my hometown, I mean, my house in, in Taiping hometown, uh, the, the ceiling fans that I use, I think it's more than 30 years uh, ever since I'm born. I use the, the, the brand uh, that's up there. It's actually uh, uh, still running. No issue until now. And then I go and check out the brand. And for now, I think this brand already brand up because they did very, very good <laughs> product. <laughs> No repeat sales then, then eventually causes them uh, 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 to go into trouble, uh, cannot continue with business. So for, for company like Ujitex uh, that might not have a lot of turn, turn around uh, for, for the product products, uh, high margin is one of the one of the things that they must uh, able to achieve. If not, their, their company will be hard to, to sustain. So these are some of the key takeaway. But of course, as of now, uh, not like everyone uh, every single family also have the coffee machine. So the, the, the room to grow is still very, very high. Lah. But then if they grow into certain volume, uh, this might become a risk. <laughs> so sure, sure. this is the top three prospect that we can see lah, from, from uh, uh, Uchitex. If you go into the, the risk, right? So I, I will just take uh, share one of the, the, the points, which is uh, they are very much depending on uh, Jura. Uh, Imagine Jura suddenly didn't do well, then, then they will be impacted uh, quite badly. So this is one of the drawbacks. Uh, of course, today's performance is because of Jura, but tomorrow performance drop also can be because of Jura. So this is some of the things that are uh, uh, the biggest weakness uh, go back to Uchitex. But the rest, I will pass it to, to, to Japan to, to, to share more about what is the rise of the wave of coffee and then what is the difference between commercially used coffee machine versus uh, the machine that you use inside your house and how this impact with GTEx business. Yep. Cool. So we just uh, look at actually Jura is actually one of the potentially uh, most likely the high highest contributor or highest uh, most reliant client uh, to UG Technologies, right? And uh, we also talk about uh, of all the machines that Jura is producing, it is actually catered to in-home uh, coffee brewers, right? So you will not find Jura machines uh, most likely at the cafes uh, because uh, the machine specs used by the commercial people, your cafe, uh, your, your favorite cafe uh, will not be likely using Jura because uh, that kind of machines will definitely cost way more than your in-home uh, kind of coffee brewers like like Jura. So in-home coffee machines like Jura or within Malaysia, Singapore, you would probably have a Nespresso machine or a Nes, Nes, Nescafe Dolce Gusto machine. So these are what we call in-home uh, coffee machines. Uh, usually it's just one machine on its own and you can uh, plug in your milk, plug in your coffee beans, and it actually will uh, come up with a coffee drink or coffee milk-based coffee uh, beverage for you. Uh, so simple, straightforward. It requires a bit of investment, uh, but ne ne nevertheless, if you have uh, invested uh, that three to four figures kind of investments, you would be practically uh, enjoying a good cup of coffee. But the quality of that in-home uh, prepared coffee will always lose to uh, whatever you get from Starbucks or the cafes that you uh, might visit during the weekends because the machines uh, that the commercial uh, cafes use uh, is usually uh, much more uh, high-end and that's why it also uh, have some differences in terms of the coffee texture and the coffee flavor as well. So if coffee were to grow uh, in terms of consumption, you would have to find out what kind of percentage that the in-home uh, coffee growth is and what is the commercial uh, or the uh, outside of home com consumption of coffee actually is. So if uh, outside consumption actually is going to uh, grow faster than in-home consumption, then there will be a limitation to uh, 
in-home copy machines grow, and that would that probably uh, signify some uh, risk to companies like Uchi Tech. Next of all, uh, we talk about rise of the third wave of coffee. So if you guys are into, you know, drinking coffee and appreciating coffee, you would have known that uh, uh, third wave of coffee actually utilizes much more simplified kind of brewing mechanism. Uh, you won't be using uh, sophisticated machines like Jura, Espresso, or even Doshi So basically, you'll be using uh, a filter or you'll be using an AeroPress. So these are relatively uh, very cheap kind of uh, equipments that you could actually use to brew uh, your specialty coffee, right? And uh, if in-home consumption uh, actually, coffee actually rise on top of the uh, third wave coffee movement catalyst, then of course uh, that will also impact uh, coffee machine uh, specialists or, or manufacturers trying to sell you a high-end uh, coffee machine as well, right? So. Uh, one of the so-called uh, growth uh, forecasts that we managed to find out uh, from the so-called uh, assets of uh, market research futures. So they are actually saying that um, coffee machine growth is going to be at the CAGR of around 4.6%. So that means every year from now, uh, it's, it's anticipated that uh, coffee machines will grow at a 4.6% a year on year kind of uh, compounded uh, annual growth rate. So 4.6%, I would say is decent, uh, not too great and not too uh, shabby, but do take note that um, there are a lot of coffee machines out there in the world. Uh, Jura is just one brand and uh, they are just quite very well known in, in the European region, right? So you can see here, there are other uh, coffee machines that probably uh, the brands we are more familiar with like Keurig, uh, Panasonic, uh, Philips as well and you also have uh, La Baza. So all of these are probably brands that uh, we are more familiar with and um, they actually have a presence all around the world compared to Jura, which is just particularly very strong in the European region. So these are the kinds of risks that you would want to take note of. Uh, it's not a space where uh, they are supreme. Uh, there are a lot of competitors also within the coffee machine uh, market and uh, kind of a competition. Okay, so uh, maybe for you guys who are not familiar with the Coffee Wave, so I just do a little bit of sharing on what Coffee Wave is. So basically the first wave of coffee started when companies like uh, Nestle actually come up with your uh, ready to, uh, you know, uh, coffee powder, Nescafe coffee powder. So basically you scoop coffee powder from a can and then you just mix it with hot water and then you add it with a lot of milk a lot of sugar, because if you don't add anything, chances are the coffee will be very, very bitter uh, and you have to add milk and sugar to make it taste nice. Then somewhere along the way, uh, a company with the name of Starbucks actually came out and they said that, nah, this is not the way you make coffee. You have to uh, roast the coffee, uh, not too dark, and then you can make it fancy, right? Uh, add milk, add uh, sugar, add syrup, and make it a frappuccino. So, Starbucks actually was one of the companies that championed the second wave of coffee. And as you guys might have already felt the effect, uh, chances are the friends are, are, are among yourselves will actually uh, drink uh, Starbucks more than uh, Nescafe because it tastes better and it also uh, is more classy, right? So this is the second wave of coffee uh, that actually uh, somehow overwrite uh, the first wave of coffee, or the coffee culture that our parents actually were familiar with uh, got taken over by the second wave uh, coffee. And moving forward, just uh, for the past 10 years, the th a third wave of coffee actually can have arrived. So these are the so-called connoisseurs who look for coffee beans uh, from specific region. And they wanted to taste coffee, uh, the taste of coffee just purely the, the aroma and the text, taste profile of the, of the coffee themselves. They don't want the so-called coffee to be uh, impacted by the addition of sugar, syrup, and the other all kinds of fancy stuff that um, Starbucks might actually be doing. So the emphasis of where the coffee is coming from, how much degree of roastiness the coffee is actually roasted to, uh, this all plays a very, very strong uh, 
importance for the third wave of COVID. Even how you brew it, uh, using what kind of brewing mechanism uh, also actually made third wave of coffee uh, very, very famous and very, very upcoming trend. And so far, I think a lot of the cafes uh, around uh, Malaysia and Singapore, if you can come across a cafe that is selling specialty coffee, then chances are they are one of the key proponents of the third wave of coffee. And some very famous brands that you might come across, uh, whether you are in Singapore or, or have been to other parts of the world are uh, like companies like Blue Bottle Coffee and also uh, Percentage Arabica. So if third wave coffee were to continue to pick up, uh, people will not be putting more money into buying uh, sophisticated coffee machines like Jura and uh, Nespresso. So that could be one kind of risk that you would want to anticipate as well. So after going through um, how Uchitech actually uh, manufactures uh, good coffee machines uh, with relatively high profit margins, the prospects and also the risk. Here we are again, uh, the valuation part of the company. So the company is trading at around 17.8 times PE ratio, not too expensive, I would say, uh, compared to the tech stocks that we previously have covered. One very good aspect of this company is that the ROE is surprisingly high. So it's at 46.2%, uh, uh, judging on how the profit margin uh, the company has been maintaining. Uh, not too surprised to see a high uh, end of our ROE for this company. Uh, dividend yield, it's at 4.86%, because this company has been quite uh, generous in terms of uh, repaying shareholders. Uh, if they earn more money, definitely you'll be expecting more dividends. So quite, pretty much straightforward, and uh, which is probably why you will see uh, decent or relatively high dividend yield compared to the other companies. Lah. So Chunbing, relatively good numbers for a good company, well-run company. So any opinions on you, whether that uh, if this is a company that you want to put in your portfolio? Yeah, I think... Uh... Of, of course, he has a, a few uh, factors that I think uh, which matches one uh, the, the, fact, the, the criteria that I need before I put into the, the watch list. So I think one of, the, one of it is they are the one that doing real money uh, uh, generating business without that, but they can keep on uh, sustaining the company, having profit, giving out as dividend. So this is something uh, that's very important uh, in, in the business world. You are not taking a like financial risk to actually uh, build your business. But of course, some might, might argue that they didn't do enough leverage to grow uh, uh, in a faster rate. But then different industries have different measures. So this one of the very important thing is they make money, they, they pay out uh, a dividend quite generously, and then uh, they don't have debt plus a lot of criteria. And then secondly is, uh, if you talk about coffee alone, uh, like it or not, work from home culture will st stimulate a lot of needs for, for coffee machine inside the house. Uh, but of course, like what Jupan mentioned, a lot of people will go for third wave of coffee, but then it will take time. I mean, different people have different uh, preference. Lazy people probably won't go for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the, it's the easiest one. You get everything ready, you just keep on pressing the button, it, it will get ready for you uh, and you don't have to do a lot of things for, for, for a weeks or four months. So this is some of the, 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 the key thing that a lot of people might, might, might offer for this. Yep. And then of course, uh, talking to, to this is something that, that we, me and uh, Japan, uh, when we first started uh, designing the course for, for the Eden Gem, right? uh, we always try to find a way that uh, it's a foolproof guide that, that helps any people that's new or, or, or to, to, to share markets. Uh, it's a foolproof checklist for you to, to use before you wanted to justify whether uh, uh, this company actually matches the criteria for you to consider them uh, put into the watch list. Uh, because dividend company is relatively uh, predictable, usually the business is stable, uh, a lot of criteria is, is it make it a lot more mechanical uh, because of you have A, B, C, D, then POM. E is the thing, uh, it's, it's a factor that you should go in already. For example, 
uh, but, but compared to, to other uh, 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 stocks, right, you may need to study the industry. They might be operating at, at loss, but have a lot, a lot of potential. Uh, or some of the, 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 the company that it will get going up to a certain price, need insider news. All this is very, very challenging. But for a lot of people that you might not want to spend a lot of time uh, when you uh, check out all the company, checklist is very important. Use this thing. It's like you want to do uh, some things. You wanted to cook something. Uh, it's easy. Instead of you try to think how to cook, you go to YouTube, you have step one, two, three, four, five, follow the recipe. At least uh, uh, it won't run far. So this is some of the things that we try to do and help you uh, to get the recipe uh, of, of picking up a good stock, but whether to buy or not. Well, of course, this is something uh, uh, back to your risk profile and so on. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I think thanks, Juming, for bringing that up. Uh, but before that, uh, just a snapshot of Uchi Tech's uh, share price. So you can see that uh, even though the company has been relatively a good company, right? Because um, it is more like a dividend paying company, you wouldn't see the share price going like crazily high up, right? So just to give you what I want to ex 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 express is that if you look at uh, year 2018, the share price actually went up as high as 350 a share. So over the years, it just stayed relatively flat, even though just now we saw that um, the company actually managed to grow their revenue uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, right? So it has been relatively flat. So something might be actually uh, capping the company's so-called share price from going up. Maybe giving up dividend is the way the company thinks it's best to be paying uh, shareholders interest. But uh, in a way, you have to see that this is a company that will just pay you dividends and uh, maybe you will not see huge kind of capital gains. So it really boils down to your personal uh, preference. Some people will just look at uh, dividends that it is. Some people will want a combination of both, right? I don't just want dividend paying company, but I also want to see some kind of uh, capital gains. So if you are someone who is like that, then maybe you want to reconsider uh, your position in Uji Tech, or you want to further monitor to see that um, what are the uh, future measures that uh, Uji Tech could actually uh, improve their current business model and actually make uh, the margins go up higher or they come up with a new business vertical that can actually grow their business more. So yeah, these are the kinds of uh, points or, or things that you have to ponder uh, when you look at the company's uh, business and also how they run the company. So uh, talking about whether Gucci Tech is actually a good dividend company, here we just share with you guys uh, one of the few hurdles that uh, is available inside Dividend Gems. So if you sign up to Dividend Gems, basically you'll be getting access to all the criteria, the foolproof, uh, complete checklist on how we screen for dividend companies. And once you have this, basically you can go out and do your own hunting. You don't need to wait uh, for Kaya Plus every Thursday's uh, Not So Nice Show and just get to know one company every week. Basically, if you have the time during the weekends, just use this checklist and hunt for the next dividend company yourself. So the first hurdle is the same as the ones that we shared last week. Dividend payments are non-negotiable. So for the past 10 years, this company has always been paying dividends, right? So non-negotiable, they actually fit the criteria. So they pass the first hurdle. Second hurdle, uh, which remains uh, a secret, and but it will be unveiled if you join Dividend Gems. So they also pass uh, the second hurdle inside our dividends machine uh, criteria, right? And also, just to also share with you guys, this company actually passed uh, four hurdles already. So we check uh, Uchi Technologies uh, metrics against our, our hurdles, our preset hurdles of seven criteria. Basically, we passed one, two, three, four. Already. So just left five, six, seven, it's a question mark. So if you guys are interested to actually learn how to spot and actually have a foolproof method of finding good dividend stocks, then yeah, definitely dividend gems is something we would actually recommend for you guys to actually check it out. Uh, you'll be holding the two-day event next week, uh, Saturday, Sunday, 6 and 7 of March. So if you guys have the time and if the price is right, then do definitely give us uh, consideration and join us next coming weekend. And also, uh, for those who have actually joined our 2021 Stock Plus, 
uh, you guys would be expecting an email on the update of the 10 stocks that we just shared with you guys last month. And of course, if you are a subscriber of 2021 Stock Plus, you would be uh, very happy and very excited because there are some uh, huge uh, capital gains in some of the companies that uh, we are actually we have really shared with you guys. So do expect an email by the weekend uh, where we share what happened, what went well, and what actually not went well for some of the companies, but overall, uh, what are the key uh, findings and the key uh, outlook that we have. Basically, nothing much has changed. Uh, the fundamentals of these companies still stay very strong. And uh, if you have just continued to do your studies and took a position uh, before these stocks actually uh, went on a continuous run, then uh, congratulations to you guys. Right. So, that's about it for UG Technologies. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we will head on to the questions and see that uh, if there's uh, any questions that uh, you guys have prepared for us. Okay. Yeah, good evening, guys. And uh, welcome everyone back. So I think here we go, the first question. Is it common for a company to pay special dividend to their owners, even though it is a zero debt company? If the company is holding so much cash, right, uh, and they don't know what to do with the cash, it would be better for them to pay the owners or the shareholders the cash, else the cash would be sitting in the accounts of the company and um, just sitting there doing nothing. At least they pay to shareholders. You take the money, you buy other stocks, uh, or you spend it on something, buy something you want. So money, if left unattended, is a waste of opportunity and waste of time. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, okay, next question. How is Uchi compared to VS industry, which is tied to Kurik? Good question. I think we haven't really looked deeper into VS. Um, but if I were to just take a brief look at VS industries, I think Uchi Tech's profit margin is specifically very, very uh, strong, right? Just being an ODM. Um, and I think they have been very predictable and very constant with the way they are running the company. Um, and um, yeah, if you see, even back then when the pandemic actually happened, uh, price went down, but it just recovered back and um, just so happened that uh, uh, everything has been quite stable for the company. Where else for VS, let's see, it's still loading. I'll come back to VS later once the, the fundamentals set have been uh, loaded. But um, to not waste time, let's proceed with the questions. Um, oops, I think there's some black. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Our preferences in three in one. Okay, yeah. Some people like three in one, some people like uh poor work coffee some people like um coffee machines right so there's no right or wrong um uh, the best coffee is the one that uh, makes you happy every morning <laughs> next question overall a defensive stock not explosive enough. Yeah, I think you sum it up pretty much uh, with just one sentence. Uh, defensive stock, not explosive enough. Definitely not uh, the, top, the cup of coffee that capital gain investors or growth investors would look at. Uh, what else? Okay. Nope. Uh, not my cup of coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Nishin also ventured into coffee machines. Yeah, uh, I think I saw something about that, but uh, I would want to see 
um, some kind of a positive performance from Nishin uh, when they ventured, fully ventured into the coffee business and see how that actually uh, uh, contributes to their profit margin. Then only it will be more apple to apple kind of comparison. Okay, shit. The, let me refresh this DS Industries Fundamentals. Uh, internet has been a bit slow. All right, Dividend Gem, sign up now. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Benjamin, what's your take on rising bond use and its effect on the overall equity market, especially towards growth stock with no profit yet? Mm, I think, uh, of course, the market has been uh, relatively volatile lately. Uh, when down by a few hundred points and then went up again by a few hundred points. And of course, you have uh, particularly vocal uh, uh, so-called uh, government uh, in the US. So if you guys follow the US news, uh, they are judging uh, President Biden's uh, COVID relief. Uh, they want uh, him to achieve certain kind of metrics. So yeah, bond use will be one of the aspects that is going to affect the macroeconomic. But uh, my key take is that um, if the company's business model is strong, they can still grow regardless of uh, what kind of uh, bond use or what kind of uh, macroeconomic situations. Um, prices going up and down in the short term, yes, but in the long term, the company can grow um, the fundamentals will still shine through. Lah. So uh, I just follow the news. I just read the news as it is, but I don't let it cloud and impact my uh, investment decision-making process. Will it be better for companies to spend their cash for growth and expansion or to pay dividends to share shareholders? Have seen some growth companies not div having dividend policies at all. Um, true. Uh, it all, but it also depends, uh, again, to um, whether there is that much growth for that company in that particular segment. So we saw that just now, uh, one of the reports that I quoted or found from the internet that coffee machines is expected to grow around Kager 4.6%. So 4.6% per year, every subsequent year, is not a sexy kind of growth. So do you want a company, if the company is aware that this is the kind of growth uh, forecast that they are anticipating, uh, they wouldn't want to spend the money uh, building uh, factories and doing expansion when the growth forecast uh, does not actually going to fit into their near to midterm kind of growth, right? So probably there are still some kind of capacity uh, within uh, Uchi Tech's current uh, lines and current uh, expansion. Or current line build up. So if they still have the capacity, they don't need to actually rush into making expansion. Uh, the expansion can come when lines are actually going to fill up and then they need to actually consider uh, expanding their lines, right? So it all ties back to how uh, glossy or how rosy the growth picture is for a particular company in that business. So it all ties back to how Kaya Plus actually looks and see companies. Uh, it's always how this company's business work and how it's going to grow uh, in the next few years to come. If it's not that kind of sexy growth, then of course the, cap the management of a company needs to be more careful in terms of planning the expansion, not just expand as it is. And then in the end, uh, the capacity does not fill up and you have a loads uh, of costs actually kicking in. Uh, you pay for a new batch of workers they're actually either because uh, you don't have enough uh, sales to actually run the plant. You have excess of depreciation costs eating into your company's balance uh, or profit statement because you actually mistimed your expansion. So these are the kinds of things that you have to consider. It's not uh, straight on uh, go, for, go ahead kind of expansion. It all has to ties back to what is the prospect of the business of the company. So yeah, BS Industries chart is finally out. Straight away, I see that um, the company is actually doing uh, not as sexy as um, Uchi Tech. Uh, profit margin is yo-yo also, but uh, it's at single digits. 
you can say that um, they are growing, but not as as consistent and as predictable as Uchi technologies. Um, dividends, you can get dividends as well, but um, in terms of the consistency trend of dividends compared to Uchi tech, yeah, Uchi tech looks like a more company that I might opt for for my kind of risk profile. So if I want a dividend company, uh, it's less riskier, it's more predictable, Uchi tech looks to be uh, better from that aspect versus VS technology. Okay. Um, thank you for, for asking the question. So I think, I hope I clarified. Um, Jupan, your turn. Would you buy into Uchi at its current valuation? Not a buy whole <laughs> self question. <laughs> um, I would say no, because I'm biased. And I'll tell you why I'm biased. And the reason I'm able to share with you guys uh, the so many kinds of wave of coffee is because personally, I am a third wave coffee uh, drinker. So basically, I brew my coffee, I buy my coffee beans, I brew it at home. And I don't think that I would be spending an amount of money to buy a sophisticated coffee machine like Jura or Nespresso. So based on that, consumption pattern, I am biased. And if I think that third wave coffee would actually grow, then it does not make sense for me to bet onto Uchi Tech or invest into Uchi Tech because I am biased and I think that third wave coffee is actually going to uh, become more and more prevalent. But you can argue with me and I also argue with myself back, Jura sales unit actually increase from just now the uh, amount that we saw, uh, 366,000 to 388,000, if not mistaken. So there is still growth. So that is the kind of uh, justifications or, or argument that you have to play with yourself. For me, I stand with my point and my consumption pattern that um, I'm a third wave coffee uh, adopter. Uh, I will not uh, actually go for uh, an in-home uh, sophisticated coffee machine like uh, Jura. So I probably would not uh, invest into Uchi Tech. So not a buy, hold or sell decision, uh, just my personal preference based on my <laughs> consumption pattern of coffee. All right. Tech stocks has made some strong value today. In your opinion, do you think that some of the valuable companies is a bit on the high side? Probably I will pass it to Chumbing. Do you think that tech stocks are high in terms of valuation? So I presume it would be companies like Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, etc. Yeah, but, but of course, if, if you talk about Google, Facebook, uh, the P ratio is relatively uh, uh, low compared to company like Jeff Tax, the local one, uh, or even Shopify Five that is still operating. Uh, I mean, just turned for fit uh, uh, not long ago. I think it's about four five hundred P kind of thing. So. Uh, I, I would say uh, in, in the eye of, eye of pandemics, uh, and then of course US is turning on the machine of printing a lot of US USD notes. Uh, they will be hot money into the markets, and when and you into have, cryptocurrency, <laughs> and you have hot money into the market. Uh, usually, you have money lah. Uh, you put it into the bank, you get maybe not even one percent uh, 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 return in FD. Yep. A, lot, a lot of normal people will just try to find somewhere that generate more return than they need. Then, then those people that's on, on the uh, with higher risk profile, they have access to this hot money. So they go for higher risk one, for, for example. Uh, and then the, the third party, the, the, the third one uh, inside this equation is the company. They also can have access to this hot money. I borrow money and, and buy back the share. So a lot of these factors are... Uh, will actually build up the momentum in, in share markets uh, due to the, for me, it's not logical move uh, 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 by the US uh, Federal Reserve to print money. I mean, logical or not is, is, is questionable, uh, but it's maybe right to, to, for them to face pandemic uh, period like this. But by then, uh, in normal circumstances, this is a bit crazy. Uh, how can you print money and you will expect inflation to come uh, very, very soon, right? So when this thing happened, uh, usually 
it need to go somewhere. And when you talk about share market, because of pandemic, then the option for them to just become, uh, 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 the range becomes smaller. You won't go and invest in Asia, Boeing. I mean, if you're not in uh, 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 during the early day uh, or during the, 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 the big drop uh, back in March last year, you, you might not be interested to, to go in anymore because you wanted to wait whether the, the, the vaccine program actually bring uh, very positive results or not. A lot of people will sit back and, and try to monitor. They need to go somewhere. The, the somewhere, uh, only got one answer, uh, should be tech stock, electric vehicle stocks, semiconductor stock. This is like the few option. That's why it, it, it will go there. I mean, I mean valuation or not, uh, uh, it's very relative. You have a lot of people chasing for the same thing. Of course, it becomes uh, very expensive. And then th that's why uh, fundamental uh, analysis is, is important. Uh, you should not chase for the high price, but, but then uh, if you're confident that this thing will, will come uh, uh, in a few years, as in it will realize in a few years, then, then, then it's also logical for you to, to, to make some decision. For example, some of the very interesting company like electric vehicles, it can be very, very, uh, uh, how to say, for, for me, it will be having a lot of potential in the coming years. Electric vehicles, like it or not, lah, because the entire uh, market share of electric vehicle in the world only 3%. Of the entire vehicle that you have in the world, uh, they turn into 10%, it's like a 200% growth already. You need to go to somewhere, Tesla, Neo, Xiaopeng, or, or whichever uh, uh, electric vehicles providers, they will be the one get, getting it. Uh. But, but now, of course, it, you can argue that it's very, very expensive. But then, uh, if they are going to have 200, 200% growth in coming years, then maybe it's logical to go in now. Uh, I mean, for yeah. example. And I totally agree. It's how well positioned the company is to actually uh, grow with the so-called catalyst that is coming, right? A lot of shares are expensive, uh, but if the company can still grow, the growth is there to justify the growth story. Um, expensive is not just in terms of the PE, but uh, how short your horizon is. So if you are someone who uh, is just eyeing for 10 to 20% kind of trading uh, margins or trading profits uh, every day you go into go in and out of the market then of course suddenly if you buy into the share you, for no reasons you don't know why the, the share has actually went up by 20% just in a day you'll be very happy because you made 20% on that company by luck by chance because you are a technical analysis and um, you want to book your profits quickly because this is just uh, usually most how uh, mostly how how technical analysis uh, people work uh, they always uh, look at price supports price move, price movements but for value investors we are the ones who look for good companies we buy uh, when the price is right you maybe buy more when price is down uh, and then we hold it for a period of at least three five years down the road. And this is where you see uh, portfolios with 100% gain, 150% gain. So this is a different kind of ball game. It involves uh, patience in finding a good company. It also involves in patience in waiting for the company to grow and for the share price uh, to correlate back with the company's prospects and growth. Lah. So if you were to ask another question, the other way is that um, whether tech stocks today uh, expensive, I was saying no, uh, there are still plenty of uh, headroom for them to grow. But that is just a very, uh, uh, very, I would say, uh, it does not point to certain uh, tech companies, just that overall, uh, the big techs are still quite strong. And if you were to look at the small, smaller niche tech companies, that one is on a case to case basis. La. But just overall, the big techs are relatively uh, acceptable if you are someone who is looking to invest five to ten years so uh, still uh, plenty of uh, excitement and, and growth opportunities for them lah. okay i think this is also another interesting questions uh, i'll give you my thoughts on the steel sector booming because uh, it also correlates back to what 
I am doing in my daytime job. So yeah, just fun fact to you guys. Uh, even though we might be doing some, uh, in your opinion, good sharing on on the stock markets and also companies or uh, on and also investing, we are not currently doing it full time. We both of us have our own daytime jobs. This is just a site. Uh, project and kind of passion kind of things that we do uh, but hopefully we are able to, to grow it and um, talking about steel stocks uh, actually I wouldn't say that it's a bad thing or thing to worry about uh, the fundamental uh, of what is happening globally on steel stocks is that um, China is actually the one uh, producing most of the world steel right they actually produce uh more than 50%. If I remember right, the number stands around 60, 70 uh, percent. So it produced almost 70 plus percent of the global steel, if my memory is okay, right. And um, they are the company, they are the country that actually got over the pandemic uh, the fastest. Uh, they got it first, but they also get got over it the fastest. And um, economy is actually booming in China, not just uh, economy, but also in terms of uh, construction, uh, car sales, all of these uh, so-called consumption pattern kinds of uh, behavior, uh, building new new buildings, uh, building more cars, uh, more people buying cars, all of this actually ties back to the country uh, requiring more and more steel. And the internal input or the production of China itself is not enough to support the consumption that they currently are facing. So what to do? They have to buy steel from other countries. And some of these companies may, might be from Malaysia. And this is probably why you see our local steel stocks uh, going through a booming uh, phase in terms of the share price. So you should worry if you are a speculator. I don't know when the crazy mania of the steel prices will come to a stop. Uh, and if, if it comes to a stop and um, it does not benefit the so-called steel companies locally, then yeah, you would be holding on to a very, very high price. And uh, if the price corrects down, then yeah, that would be the kind of risk that you should worry about. But in terms of the global consumption, uh, I would say that China is actually pushing it um, and it's really how they want to actually increase their uh local demand or local uh, supply to actually equilibrium with the consumption patterns that they are currently facing with. Lah. Gaming stocks, yes. Uh, I think gaming stocks and also streaming stocks are one of the niche segments of tech stocks uh, that are going through a very, very uh, good growth phase. Um, because during the pandemic, more and more people stay at home. It's either you spend your time uh, streaming movies, streaming dramas, or you spend your time on playing games, right? So looking at how PlayStation 5 uh, is always on a shortage, you always need to bid for it. And uh, Nintendo sales actually uh, created, uh, 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 they actually beat their, their, their so-called previous historical uh, revenue and so profit. So yeah, gaming stocks is one of the niche se segment of uh, of tech stocks that you would want to look at. Uh, it will not be the end. Uh, after pandemic, more and more people will game and also more and more people will uh, subscribe to uh, streaming contents. So like Disney+, Plus, Netflix, uh, YouTube. These are the channels that we subconsciously spend time uh, on. Uh, more during the pandemic and uh, of course the gaming companies uh, are also the companies like um, Microsoft, uh, Take Two, Interactives and also yeah there are plenty of gaming companies that you should actually take a look and uh, study if you want to invest in a gaming company. All right thank you for answering all the questions. Well said quality is important as quantity absolutely. Okay, what is a rough realistic analyzed return that a value investor can expect? Just a rough estimate. Um, this is a very tough question. Uh, to manage your expectation, if you are someone who is looking for dividend stocks, uh, cash flow, uh, kind of uh, predictable returns, uh, you might start off with something 3 to 4%. 
when the moment when you buy it, but if it continues to grow, then of course it will go to 4.5, 5%, 6%. Uh, slowly and you give it enough time to grow its business and pay out more dividends if you buy into a growth stock uh, that one is pretty much more volatile there are chances that um, the value for the company does not kick in that instantly right you might buy on the company and the whole year you make nothing zero uh, maybe you also go down to negative 10 but you still hold on to the company because you still believe that uh, the company is still trying to adjust some of its uh, operating efficiencies and uh, controlling its expense as well. Then maybe by the second year, only you will see 10, 20%, this kind of uh, sudden jumps in the company share price. So this one is pretty much uh, how, how good are you at spotting the companies before uh, the price kicks in? And also uh, what kind of growth companies that you're talking about? So we talk about big tech companies. That one, I think, Relatively, they are doing around uh, 20 plus percent kind of uh, growth every year in terms of business and social share price. But if you talk about the smaller ones, yeah, that one is the one that can actually uh, go 100%, uh, 100 plus percent. So just for example, stocks that actually did 100 plus percent last year was C Limited. So the company that actually owns Shopee, uh, that actually owns Garena. So this company actually hit uh, more than 100% growth last year. So, but if this still a company operating at a loss, uh, so the traditional method to value companies based on their price to earnings ratio is not applicable and you would need uh, to assess and to value the company uh, from another criteria, right? So this is the kind of so-called expectation that you will be looking at. But overall as a portfolio, if you want to uh, prove that you are doing it right, beating the market or even matching the market, you should be doing at least 10% DIY investing. You actually mirror the uh, so-called long-term average uh, S&P 500 uh, growth, which is around 7 to 10% every year. Okay. I think last question of the night. As vaccines are coming along and the country is going into recovery mode, how do you think the car market will start to react? I think you can start to see that the market has already reacted uh, in the way where your staples, your banks have actually uh, recovered from their lows, right? Um, at the low period, uh, I think more, most banks got hit really, really hard. And even before um, the vaccines actually came out, when the overall world actually went into partial reopening uh, for Malaysia, I think it was something... Uh, maybe close to end of last year, right? Maybe around September, October, uh, when the moratorium got lifted, not everyone actually uh, uh, we, we, uh, continued their moratorium. You can see that uh, that was the period of time where your staples and your legates, your banking financials actually started to move already. Uh, today, they already passed the lowest uh, back then uh, in the early March kind of price volume. Uh, and um, you will see that they will continue to rise again, um, even though that um, in terms of their results, you won't see the, the actual uh, uh, positive result kicking in, but uh, everything has been priced in for a recovery already. And talking about uh, vaccines coming in and the so-called efficiencies and the so-called effectiveness, which is proven to be uh, close to 90 plus percent, you will see your healthcare stocks like your glove stocks actually correcting downwards more and more. They breach past the strong support of six ringgit a share for, for top glove and all are the uh, all the healthcare stocks, uh, the glove stocks are actually corrected pretty, pretty much downwards. And uh, this is also what we wanted to keep on emphasizing. Ever since last year, middle of the year, we are not in favor of the overall too bullishness sentiment of the glove stocks and uh, just one year down the road, uh, we are proven to be uh, standing on the right side and not getting burned by the frenziness of, of the uh, so-called uh, old enthusiasm of the glove stocks uh, back then in in middle of last year. So, uh, of course, staples and financial sectors will continue to see some uh, outward uh, recovery, but um, we are still much more positive on tech stocks uh, that could still be a huge 
beneficiary uh, as we slowly uh, you know, move into a more 5G-centric world and a more uh, tech-orientated world. So the big tech companies will still probably do very well, but if you are someone who wants to look for uh, more exciting niche companies, uh, you'll be the smaller tech companies. Lah. Okay, I guess that's about it uh, for today's sharing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do, we, do you consider Uchi Tech a tech company or just a manufacturing company, Jumei? Um, <laughs> I would consider them as manufacturing company, but then they are slightly at the upside because they are at OBM level. Take an example of a company called Magnitech. I think Magnitech uh, is, is at the lower end, uh, at the OEM level. So yep. profit margin is, you can't really protect the profit, profit margin, to be honest. And you are at the mercy of uh, your your key clients. Uh, when they say goodbye to you due to whatever reason, uh, you are worth worthless. I mean, it's some of the key takeaway uh, from, from for this company. But when we talk about recovery uh, due to vaccine, uh, I would say you take time to realize that the impact. Yep. Uh, a lot of people react now. And then uh, when they go to second quarter, they accept, wow, the, the, the result will come back. And they realize it's not. And then they will have some sort of correction. In my opinion, they might have some sort of correction because the impact will take time to, to come in. Uh, I think in the planning for, for Malaysia, it's not like in these two quarters, everyone will be able to, to take uh, uh, the vaccine. Yep. Uh, the fact that we don't have enough, lah, I mean, the world doesn't have enough stock, we didn't buy enough, and, and, and so on. So, so uh, don't put a lot of expectation uh, on the coming quarter that magically all the recovery stock, like good things, bank stock suddenly will, will go up. In my opinion, it will not. It, it will take at least time. another two to three quarters to make some positive impact into it. And then a lot of short-term uh, uh, investors might have a shock and then they just pull out. Maybe it's a good chance to enter. Lah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. But, but for me, you won't realize that that fast. Yep, it definitely, definitely not be this quarter or even next quarter. Maybe the third quarter onward we have chance, but take time. Yep. So I think that also ties back to how fast can we actually uh, continue on, on our so-called vacation out of the country, like tourism stocks, airline stocks, right? So a lot of things happening right now is just short-term price open and the so-called enthusiasm that uh, the end is finally near. But for uh, most of us to get vaccinated and for a system in place to ensure that only vaccinated people can uh, travel out of the countries and, and you know enter the other countries that one also take time to actually come out right so do not get too carried away by the near term uh, rosy uh, catalyst uh, but just stay on your ground and look for the really really uh, good companies to invest in uh, irregardless uh, if pandemic were to worsen or suddenly uh, recover at a much faster uh, than expected kind of rate Right. So I hope today's sharing is a worthwhile sharing for you guys. Uh, Uchi Tech Company, yeah, pretty simple company, but uh, I hope we actually bring in more perspective of the company and also by going uh, from another perspective in how coffee is being consumed around the world and how that actually uh, spells a potential prospect or potential risk to Uchi Tech. Uh, so uh, as always, thank you very much for your one hour of time uh, every Thursday night, 9 to 10 p.m. Sometimes we overshot, but I hope that the overshot also comes with a bit of learnings and lessons that you could take home with you. And as always, we will see you guys every Thursday, 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, next week company, yeah, do give us uh, a shout out in the comments on what company you want to know. And uh, yeah, for those who actually sign up for Dividend Gems, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next weekend. And um, hopefully it will be uh, also a very enriching session for not just you, but to us as it will be a two-way kind of uh, sharing uh, and communication uh, with you guys. And uh, if that's all, uh, we wish you a good evening. Enjoy your evening and uh, 
We'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.